Welcome back to At Home with Roby. I'm Patrick McIsaac from Roby Electric, along with Trent Haston. We are your host, Trent Haston from the Roby family of companies. Thank you, thank you. Formerly Roby Electric. <laughs> nah, we keep we keep chiding Patrick about that, but he, Patrick's got a little grump, grumpiness in his voice today. Oh, so, just a little so we're going to take it easy on him. A little pollen, a little pollen in the air. A little no, pollen. No big deal. Yeah, my eyes been watering a little bit. Trent, we got some of your friends in the studio today. We always have my friends in the studio, son. Come well, on. I don't think we're going to invite any enemies in here, are we? No, uh uh-uh. but, but we do have uh, one of my very dearest best friends, Mike Griffin, is with us. Mike, welcome to the show again. Thank you, Trent. Great to be here again. Uh, and, and you bond really exceptionally well with fellow Westsiders when you're from the West Side. So uh, Mike and I have a special bond. We can kind of regurgitate uh, where we grew up a little bit. Don't and use then, those and, big words on me. And then, and then Mike has uh, one of his dear friends who is a friend of mine as well with him. Who introduced, introduce who else we have in the studio, Mike. Yeah, I'm glad to have Austin Helms with me. Austin is an entrepreneur apprentice for my company, Griffin Brothers Companies. And uh, uh, Austin graduated from Chapel Hill back in May, and I've, he he come aboard in July. And we've been working hard on some uh, entrepreneurial things, and uh, we're excited to talk about some of it. So you recruited him out of uh, Clemson? <laughs> oh, Patrick! Uh, come up. on, Clemson's a great school, good ACC school. But no, UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, met uh, Austin a couple years ago through the business school. I'm on the board of advisor for the school, and he's a. Uh, at that time, he had started a business in Chapel Hill, and that's how we become uh, acquaintances through uh, me being a judge, and a and a kind of a pitch competition that he was in. So, Mike, this is an, a mentorship with the Entrepreneurial Flair Show uh, we're doing today. I really admire how you try to give back, uh, number one, to help younger people find a way and have opportunities that that we had, but also that you might have, it would have been better if more people would have blazed a trail for you, right? True, true. Secondly, you're trying to build your business and grow your business and invest with alongside and and help help these young people, the ones that want to work hard and, and give them an opportunity to succeed. Exactly. You know, I've I've really been mentoring for more than uh, 25 years with college kids, and what I have found, a lot of people think it's great that you give back, but I found that I get just as much, if not more, from that process. You know, learning what the next generation wants in life, learning just uh, uh, things that can maybe can better our business with uh, trying to address how to to market to younger generations. So I've always had a benefit from doing what I do. So is that why I think of you as so tech-savvy? That could be one of the reasons. I am a little bit of a tech nerd. I do think of you as tech savvy. Uh, why don't you give us a little background on on what you do for for UNC Chapel Hill, how you serve there, and and how what kind of program you've built at, at the Griffin Brothers family? Sure, and, uh, sure. And and how it parlays. Well, back in '86, when I was in school, way back in 1986, Chapel Hill, I actually started a fraternity, and through that process, I kind of got the entrepreneur bug which ultimately got me back into my family's business. But uh, I think by starting a fraternity and becoming an alumni advisor upon graduating, that was the beginning of my mentorship. You know, in the very beginning, in the 20s, it's more just hanging out with friends and you get in the awkward stage of like an uncle and then a fatherly figure or whatever. But <laughs> uh, I've gone through all those phases, but <laughs> probably for the last six, seven, maybe ten years, um, I've gotten very involved with the business school. And we have a great family center, which I'm looking forward to getting you involved yes, with. Yes, sir. And we've talked about that a lot. But we also have a great entrepreneurial program within the business school. And that's a good example was, was Austin. That's how I met Austin. And I really was excited about his passion for entrepreneurship and wanting to be his own uh, um, business owner and have uh, luckily hired him away from going to California to come to Charlotte to pursue some ideas that we have to pursue together. Now, Austin, I'm I'm looking over here to my right. Now, you really want to be a high flyer California guy, or you want to be a you know grassroots down on down on the ground entrepreneur? What do you want to be, buddy? Uh, yeah, so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm definitely a country boy at heart, but um, <clears throat> I was I always had my hopes to go to California, be in the Silicon Valley, be right up in the startup space. Uh, and then I guess I met Mike at that pitch competition, like he was referring to, and just it kind of I've kind of looked at things totally differently than I used to, uh, and I, that's a big testament to kind of what Mike showed me, and uh, kind of kind of more talking about the mentorship program, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was. 
I bought into the sexy, let's go uh, build a startup company that IPOs and we'll become a billionaire, uh, when really that's not really reality. Uh, and I've kind of seen that pretty quickly. Well, now, I'm glad you glad you nipped it in the bud before it became a problem. There, <laughs> There is a Darius Rucker song. It's one of my favorite songs. It's called Southern State of Mind. And he talks about walking down the road in California saying hi to everybody. And they say, and this boy's weird. <laughs> so that's might have had a been because you are the guy that has broken liver mush with me several mornings in the last six or eight months since we've gotten to know each other pretty well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, liver mush was always a staple in my Valdez home. Um, <laughs> And I, I guess it's nice to share, too, that I shared liver mush with you with cufflinks for the first time, which was kind of rare. Um, but I guess that's my California flavor coming out. Uh, but as a, as a Western North Carolina kid, I don't really think Did I can Mike say that. Did Mike tell you I was going to be in a suit or something that first meeting? <laughs> I think he had something fancy to go to afterwards. Oh, oh that's be. what you say. That's when you leave it hanging in the car. You know, on the side, you're not going to roll your window down. You know, right? <laughs> so, so it's pretty cool. So, how old are you, Austin? I'm 22. You're 22. You work with Mike now six or eight months. Eight months. Good. So, uh, what what did you study particularly at Carolina to set the stage for what you're doing now? So, I got a BSBA degree, so Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, with a concentration in entrepreneurship. And I guess that all kind of changed during my junior year. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since I was seven years old selling candy at my sister's basketball games to selling t-shirts to owning vending machines to starting another car wash business when I was 12. Um, but then kind of got that, got, I guess, encouraged again when I started uh, the entrepreneurship class at Chapel Hill. I actually just got off the phone with him. My old professor, Jim Kitchen, um, kind of set the stage for me and kind of reintroduced me to this entrepreneurial bug, uh, which eventually introduced me to Mike probably six months after that class started. Wow. No, that's that's wonderful. I did sell uh, blow pops and lemon heads out of uh, a locker in the A-Hall at Wilson Middle School. I used to make several hundred dollars a week. Don't get me now. Um, but so I understand your entrepreneurial bug. And, uh, and Mike, I, I know you're an entrepreneur as well. You, you graduated school, you come back, your family business, just like my family business, was custom residential construction, particularly remodeling, great tradition. Your family business was Griffin Brothers Tire. Exactly, exactly. We had just a uh, one tire store at 1545 West Trade, and uh, father had built a great reputation over 25 years. And uh, like I said, when I was in school, I kind of caught the entrepreneurial bug by starting a fraternity when I came back. I had that light bulb moment my senior year and said, you know, I can do this with my father and try to help grow his business. My dad's got a whole lot of ambition. He's a lot like Trent with uh, wanting to really grow and <laughs> do other things. And uh, so it's a perfect platform. So when, we got, when I got out of school in 87, the, the day I graduated, I started working with dad and we started brainstorming how to grow. And over the years, we have diversified the business to where we've gotten a lot of other things besides tires. You're very entrepreneurial, but me, your dad and I have a similar personality, I think. Exactly. Very similar. <laughs> took, had this uh, f- fond memory just about a year ago having uh, Trent and my dad together up in the mountains. And uh, it's a, just a you know, 76-year-old and a 38-year-old act a lot alike. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. He's doubled me up. But, but, but I love hanging out with your dad. And since we've got to know each other, I mean, it's like we'll be with a group of 30 people. And it's always like him and I find ourselves over there chewing the cud in the corner, you know. Uh, <laughs> but no, your dad's – I kind of look at your demeanor and your mild manner personality now. now I mean, you got hustle and, and you're going you're gonna to get it done. But you're very similar to my father. Mm-hmm. relative to me so it's kind of like reverse which is really cool yeah, um exactly <laughs> so and, and and i look at you as as a best friend but also as a mentor to me and and as a father figure it was pretty cool last week uh when uh when patrick was talking about his 40 under 40 a couple of weeks ago that he won and he he emulated uh, that that I was his mentor or a big mentor in his life, and it was very special. But it was kind of what we're trying to do with our traditional family businesses and where we're trying to take them. And, and we're trying to – my goal is to give give people that want opportunities opportunities. Yeah, exactly. And it's really been fun to watch Patrick grow Roby Electric and just watch the Roby family grow. And, and I've kind of watched that. I, like I said, I always learn from people I'm around. I've learned a lot from Trent. Um, even though he's such a young one, but uh, we are looking forward to try, kind of to do that same thing, continue to grow our business in similar ways. 
Well, if you and Austin will stick around with us, when we come back, maybe we can dive into what uh, what you guys are doing with your business, what Austin's working on, and what the goals are, and how how you hope it to blossom. Yeah, fantastic. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 